Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. All this week I'm making a series of videos talking about buying and selling stocks. But before you can buy and sell individual stocks, you should really understand and consider ETFs. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund, and this is a type of fund that owns an underlying asset that can be bonds, stocks, currencies, commodities, uh, gold, whatever. But to understand ETFs, you really need to understand mutual funds. And ETFs have only been around since the 90s, but mutual funds have been around since the 1800s. Somebody, 150 years ago, came up with the idea that owning all individual stocks was too expensive. To own shares of Apple and Berkshire Hathaway, Facebook, Microsoft, to own everything that you want to own is too expensive. However, if you were to uh, get together with a bunch of other people and pool your money into a single fund and then use that fund to buy all the stocks you wanted, then you could own a share of a fund that owns shares of all the companies that you want. So mutual funds are a clever way for investors to pool their money together in order to share the risk of certain large investments, but also share in the benefits. And amongst mutual funds, there are two types. There are actively managed funds and then index funds. For a whole host of reasons, uh, I don't recommend actively managed funds with any company. I recommend this book called The Little, the Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John Bogle. And it basically outlines very well the traps of the actively managed funds. If, if they're actively managed, then you have to pay someone. You have to pay probably a team of people to actively manage it. And their salaries, their costs, their offices come out of whatever you're earning in this fund. Additionally, actively managed funds buy and sell faster than a traditional index fund would. So, you, so the fund is paying more taxes and it, pass along, it passes along a higher fee for you to be invested in that fund. The index fund has been around since the 1970s, and it was actually this guy, John Bogle, who uh, came up with the idea of, why don't we just buy everything uh, at a proportional amount to its size of market share, and then you can buy a share of this fund, and it just tracks the entire market or a specific sector. And whatever the average is, you're pretty much guaranteed that if you buy that index fund. For that reason, index funds are very appealing to buy and hold investors and retirement investors, people who don't want to check the markets day to day, month to month, or even year to year. Uh, so when you buy an index fund, you're basically just saying, I just want whatever the average of this sector or commodity or whatever is over the long run. So mutual funds and index funds have been popular for a very long time. However, they had limitations. Uh, one of them is that for a lot of funds, you need a minimum uh, investment of either $1,000 to $10,000 to buy into the fund initially. Likewise, during the trading day, the uh, fund managers are managing the account. So you can't buy in or out of the mutual fund during the trading day. They usually will take your requests up to a certain point in the day. And then when the markets close and then they finish off all of their balance sheets, they then let investors uh, jump in and jump, jump out of the fund. You can't do it in real time like you can with stocks. So in the 1990s, the ETF was born and it basically, what an ETF is, is it acts like a stock, uh, but it also is the same as a mutual fund. Uh, you can take the performance in the portfolio of a mutual fund, and when you buy those shares, those shares are now publicly available and traded on the New York Stock Exchange like any other stock would individually. And in the last 20 years, ETFs have exploded in popularity because you can trade them uh, at any point in the day during a normal trading day. There is transparency about what the real-time price is. In a, in a traditional mutual fund, you don't know how your fund performed until the end of the day. But uh, on the internet, in real time, you know exactly how your ETF is performing. The expense ratio for an index ETF will be the same as an index mutual fund. If it's actively managed, then yeah, the mutual fund will have a higher fee. And lastly, the benefit of an ETF is that it has a lower entrance barrier. Whatever the single share cost of an ETF, maybe 80, 40, 100 dollars, 
that is all you need in order to uh, you know get in on that uh, get in on that sector or that share or that fund that you want to be participating in now, even though you don't necessarily have three thousand or ten thousand dollars saved yet. So in this video, let's go over some basic ETFs and why you might want to be invested in them. And all of my examples today, there are thousands and thousands of ETFs available. But in today's video, I'm only going to talk about Vanguard ETFs because uh, Vanguard is basically the king of low cost investing. Uh, they're probably the largest mutual investment fund company. Uh, this book uh, I read by John Bogle, he is the founder of Vanguard and he basically invented the index fund. And it's ideal for buy and hold investors, for retirement investors. Their platform isn't very user friendly for day traders or high frequency traders. If you want day-to-day um, -day service or better functionality, you're better off going with a different company. But Vanguard just likes to keep it simple. Their expense ratios for their funds are the lowest in the industry. Uh, their ETFs are also good because they pay dividends and then you can choose whether or not you want to reinvest them to buy more, buy more ETF stock. And finally, Vanguard is just famous. These ETFs are widely traded. Uh, there is a certain security and comfort, especially with an ETF, knowing that other people value it because once again, when you're buying and selling on the New York Stock Exchange, you can only sell something if somebody else is willing to buy it. So for smaller companies or less known companies that create ETFs, that can be a problem if you want to sell now. Okay, so the seven ETFs we're going to talk about in this video are VTI, VOO, VXF, VXUS, VYM, BND, BSV. We're going to go on Vanguard's website and something I need to tell you right now is that you don't actually have to have a brokerage account with Vanguard to buy Vanguard mutual funds or Vanguard ETFs. These are publicly traded, publicly available. I personally am using Charles Schwab in order to buy Vanguard ETFs. So if you're on Webull or Robinhood or E-Trade, you can likewise get Vanguard ETFs or Vanguard mutual funds if your brokerage account allows it. To find Vanguard's full list of ETFs, go up to Investing and then click on Vanguard ETFs. On the next page, you're going to want to click Browse a list of Vanguard's ETFs. And then on this page, it'll just give you a complete list of all of Vanguard's ETFs. Uh, there are currently 74 publicly available and it default uh, sorts them by asset class. So you have US bonds, you have, let's see, US stocks, and then you have, let's see, what else is down here? International bonds, international stocks, uh, sector and specialty ETFs. If you want to see a bigger scope about how they all perform, you can actually click this to ETF name and then it'll uh, take them out of their asset classes. And then you can sort them by any of these down, uh, down arrows. So how have they performed year to date? Let's go ahead and click on this. So this energy ETF has lost 52% of its value so far this year. Uh, obviously we're in the middle of a financial crisis, so that's why these are looking pretty terrible. But you can sort by uh, 10 year performance and we'll see that you know this information technology ETF has averaged 15% uh, in the last 10 years. But we're going to start looking at some of these funds uh, and the first one is going to be VTI. VTI is right here, Total Stock Market ETF. If you click on that, it'll take you to this page and it says that the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF seeks to track the performance of the total US stock market. So here you go. If you want to have a one and done investment strategy, all you need to do is buy VTI. And whatever the entire US stock market averages, congrats, that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the average no matter what. What's really cool about Vanguard's website is it allows you to see what exactly are you holding when you invest in this fund. So here we have the month end 10 largest holdings. So 20% of the fund is Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, uh, Alphabet, which is Google, Facebook, Berkshire, Hathaway, so forth and so forth. And if you really want the fine details, uh, go down here and click on portfolio holdings. Go ahead and click on this link. And then it's gonna tell you literally everything that you're invested in. There are 219 million shares of Microsoft, 
having a total market value of $35 billion in this fund. You own a very small percentage. You own a share of all of the holdings in this ETF fund. So scrolling down, you know, you got Intel, Home Depot, Bank of America, PepsiCo, Chevron, yada, yada, yada. And there are, you can see right here, there are 3,521 stocks currently in this uh, VTI portfolio. If you go on Google, you can Google VTI stock and you can see how it has performed over the long run. Here is the five-year performance. The dividend yield is 2.81%, which is a nice dividend. Click on max and you can see it clearly is trending upwards. If you were to be consistently reinvesting your dividends, uh, you know your market average would be, over the last 20, 30 years, close to 10%. And this honestly is a lot of people's investment strategy. They just go with VTI or whatever the mutual fund equivalent is, and that's all they invest in. Dividends reinvest, set it and forget it. However, this video I'm making for you wouldn't be very useful if you just stopped with VTI. So let's go to the next one. And the next one we're gonna talk about is VOO. And this is the S&P 500 index fund. And traditionally, in the long run, the S&P 500 has outperformed the total stock market average. Now, it's a little complicated. There are upswings and downswings, but generally uh, for the S&P 500, this tracks the 500 largest companies in America. So you have to be pretty well established and you have to have a good reputation in order to get into this exclusive club of the 500 largest companies in America. And uh, there's, I think, a lower risk of going bankrupt or being absorbed by a bigger company because they're more established, they're more likely to pay a dividend. That could explain why the S&P 500 outperforms the market average just by a little bit. So this is a very popular index fund to buy. If we scroll down and we look at what is their top 10 holdings in the S&P 500 index fund, 24%, so almost a quarter of it, is just 10 companies. Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Berkshire Hathaway. If we go back to VTI, you'll notice it's the same 10. However, in this fund, it's only holding 20% 20, 20 as the 10 largest because it has to accommodate and absorb in so many more smaller companies that are publicly traded. But the S&P 500 says, nope, we're not gonna deal with all those penny stocks, uh, and they just stick to a larger share of these larger companies. The next fund that we can look at is the Vanguard Extended Market Funds, and this seeks to track the performance of the index of everything not in the S&P 500. So uh, if you were on to buy VOO, it's the 500 largest companies, uh, the VXF fund is the the other uh, 2,000 or 3,000. So this for fun, we can scroll down and we can look at what are the top 10 holdings. And it's only 6% of the funds, but uh, it's a bunch of companies you and I have never heard of because they're not one of the 500 largest. We've got Tesla, Blackstone, uh, Lululemon, I think is like Yoga Pants, uh, Dexcom, CoStar, Splunk. I've never heard of these companies. For fun, you can go ahead and click on Portfolio Holdings, and this will bring up uh, 3,228 companies uh, that are in this fund. So if you want to invest in the smallest 3,228 stocks publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange, this is the fund for you. The next ETF we can look at is VXUS, and this stands for the Vanguard Total International Stock Fund. This is exactly what you think it is. It is an ETF that tracks all of the largest companies around the world. There's a nice little pie chart here where 40% of the holdings are European countries, 27% are in the Pacific, 23% uh, are emerging markets. I imagine that includes Brazil and India. The top 10 largest companies is about 10% of the fund. You have Alibaba, Nestle, uh, you got Royal Dutch Shell, Toyota Mo Motor Corp, HSBC. Let's go ahead and click on Portfolio Holdings. And yeah, we can see that there are over 7,000 companies that you're invested in when you buy this ETF. When you look at the performance of this ETF though, it's not very good. Uh, here is the max look. Uh, it basically hasn't grown at all. 10 years ago, it was around 50 and today it's trading below 50. 
I don't personally choose to invest in international stocks, but I know a lot of financial experts say for broad diversification, you should. I'm not doing it, but we don't know how the international fund will perform in the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. It definitely could and really should improve in the future. The next ETF we can look at is the Vanguard High Dividend Yield. This is a VYM, and this just seeks to track the uh, stocks that have the highest uh, yield for uh, dividend payouts. A lot of people like investing in companies that pay dividends because those stocks traditionally hold their value pretty well and they um, pay out a consistent reliable dividend. So if you're investing in this stock, you're investing into uh, JP Morgan Chase, Johnson & Johnson, Procter Gamble, AT&T, Coca-Cola. These are all very well known. Um, some, of them, some of them are uh, dividend aristocrats where for 25 years, they've consistently grown their dividend payout. When we go on Google and Google it, it says the dividend yield is only 3.19%. That's not very good. So it's up to you if you value this ETF. The next ETF to consider is the Vanguard Total Bond Market, BND. And this is a less risky investment, uh, less volatility. And it seeks to just basically provide you a broad exposure to all the different kinds of debt. So 63% of it is US government. Uh, and then you have ratings for AAA, AAA, A, B, A, A. You can't actually see what all the bonds are. I imagine it's a little complicated and messy and you wouldn't understand it anyways. But if you think that the markets are becoming too volatile or you feel like a downturn is coming soon, then switching your holdings or your investments to this fund should protect it from a uh, recession. When you Google how has BND performed over time, you can see that it has a dividend yield of two and a half percent. And we can go to max. It's, you know, the share price really isn't gonna go up that much. That's just how bonds are. You should be reinvesting your dividends in order to uh, grow, grow this portfolio, but it, it is good about holding its value. In the event that the total bond market is still too risky for you, there's always the Vanguard short-term bond market, and this is just uh, short-term US government high-quality bonds. Uh, the yield is going to be very low. The, uh, if you look at Google, how has this performed? You know, we just had a financial collapse and this thing barely budged. It went from 80, 80, it's still basically around trading around 80. Dividend yield is 1.33. Uh, once again, if you feel like there's too much volatility in the market for you or a downturn is coming soon, definitely don't sell after you lost every uh, lost 30% of your value. But if you can be preemptive or you know, you're just retired and you want more consistent income, then you can invest in this ETF. Okay guys, this video went longer than I planned, uh, but I wanted to give you an intro to ETFs and why they might be beneficial for you to start buying instead of individual stocks. However, in my next couple of videos, I'm gonna talk about buying individual stocks, but I felt it was just necessary that people consider um, index fund ETFs before choosing to uh, buy and sell individual stocks. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna be posting more videos soon about investing in the stock market. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave me one down below. I love hearing from you guys. Until the next video, take care.